Rather than typical arguments, <laughs> typical arguments that you hear from people, because not everyone has the um, same kind of demands. Some people might say, Look, I want to see God with my own eyes, then I will believe. And even if they saw something and that something said, I'm God, you'll find this people won't believe. Okay? The Quran actually makes this kind of um, uh, you know, response to arguments like this. There are people who say, if there were stairs ascending up to the sky, um, they will say, our eyes are bedazzled. We are, we are deluded, uh, deluded. We have been you know, under an illusion of some kind. They would not believe. They'll try to make some excuses. So some people, in, even at the time of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam or other prophets even before, they demanded a higher level of proof like this, like, I want to see, hear God directly. When they saw clear evidences of many kind, they, their response was, this is magic. This is magic. It's purely magic. So they found a way of um, showing their excuse and saying, oh, no, that's magic. It's, you made a trick, some kind of uh, you know, act of magic on us. You're not going to believe. So that means they, were, they weren't sincere in the first place. Because if they saw, for example, um, the Dead sea, Red Sea, perhaps, one of the seas that was parted and there was an open, dry path going across and Prophet Moses took the Israelites safely across the other side and he had the Egyptians, the army of the Pharaoh, trying to follow through. They could see it and they didn't just say, oh, it's magic. They actually went through chasing them. If they just believed in magic, they would have said, I'm not going to go in the middle of the ocean and we're going to all be drowned. They followed through in dry land because it's parted. But in the middle, of course, the sea overcame them from all sides and they were drowned. And then some of them, even including Pharaoh, says, now I believe. But God tells us that at that point, is not acceptable. When death comes to you and you say, now I believe, this belief is not acceptable. It's not acceptable for me. Because now you realize the truth. The, the, the truth is, is clear, evident in front of you. There is no question about belief. Belief is out of the window now. It's about you have certain of knowledge that this is the truth. So at that point, a belief is not acceptable. So in this life, we are placed with our intellectual faculty to arrive at our intellectual conviction about God, about the truthfulness of the prophet and the truthfulness of the scripture they bring. Um, that's where our faith comes in based on our conviction, intellectual conviction. Um, if God so wanted, he could have made everyone the believer. Everyone believed in him. And everyone did everything exactly like Allah wanted them to, but would there be a role of free will anymore? There won't be, because you are, you will be doing what God wants you to do. You can't do anything other than that. So you will not have any free will. So you will have a free. Do you, do you understand? You won't have any free will anymore. But you and I will accept that we have some amount of free will, because we have free will. There are some people who would exercise this free will in a good way and others won't. You know how a knife can be used to you know, chop your vegetables and your fruits or kill someone, depending on what you use. The knife itself is not evil in itself. It's just a tool. But how you use it makes it the action evil. So some people will use the faculty of their free will that God has given and use it wrongly to oppress people, to torture people, to be unjust to people, to deceive people, to lie to people, to kill people, to murder, to rape and all these evil things. Okay? And others will stay away from all of these things even though they have the free will to do that. They won't do it because God has given them a code of life which is more noble, more just, more you know, um, fulfilling to live our life in this life rather than be like a, a selfish, arrogant, individual who is just after the self-interest doesn't matter if it means killing others and robbing others of their wealth and their pleasures yeah you know some people when they rape because they can't get this in a legal way of marriage for example they, they cannot get this man or woman and they want to force them uh, on the other person and they want to deprive the other person's right and choice and the pleasure 
and they want to impose their pleasure on them and take it forcefully. That's clearly wrong. That's how, you know, you are so selfish and unjust and, uh, you know, totally, you know, like an animal. Even animals don't, you know, they behave better ways, right? So, when you examine the belief system, you will see that if you concentrate to the very core teaching of religion, you will come to know that their religion has always been one. The religion has always been the same from God because there has only been one creator and there has to be one creator. If there was more than one creator, that, you know, you, you're trying to uh, understand, had there been more than one creator, you know what's going to happen to this um, world now? There will be chaos. Yes. One creator says, I want rain right now. <laughs> BBC says five o'clock, right? It's um, three o'clock. And the other creator says, I want full sunshine. And the other creator says, no, I want now, you know, day. And the other says, I want night. I'm just giving you some example about weather, right? Yeah. Um, what's going to happen? You can't have all of this at, uh, simultaneously and, uh, you know, at, at the same time. It's not going to be possible. So, because this universe and the workings of the universe demonstrate towards the working of a unified organizer, unified planner, unified designer, it is only reasonable to accept that there is one, one creator, one designer, one originator, one intelligence, yeah? one God. Um, so, when you think about how do I know all of these things, you read the universe and you will see the universe will tell you. Do we have evidence for gravitons, the gravitational particles? We don't. Well, not to my knowledge um, today, I haven't been reading for a little while, but I don't think we have discovered gravitational particles. It's still a, a, a theory based on gravitational waves and forces where there is a pull between two objects. So a heavier object, for example, if it's a bigger mass and, and so on, it will pull the smaller objects towards itself. Like the Earth is all pulling towards the center of it. Okay, That's why we, we, we don't fly over. We are still, if, if you jump, we fall. Newton's apple didn't go up the sky, it fell. Okay, That's how he were, it was able to you know, come up with these laws of gravitation and so on. Um, so, the fact that we don't see gravity, but we see the effects of it. The effect. We don't see it. Yeah. If you look at we can't see it with our five senses. The effects is it proof is. enough, proof enough the gravity is real. Yeah. So if you examine this world, this cosmos, the effect that the, the creator designer has within the universe is proof itself of the creator of the designer. You don't have to see the designer to believe in it. The effect is there. The, the, the organization is there. The planning is there. The, you know the constants of our universe. These constants didn't just come about by um, some random chance. That's what people believe. Randomness don't generate precision. In which laboratory that random accidents generated the next generation of your technological tools, whether you watch your phones, your computers, your aeroplanes, your you know, you know, your fast cars, none of them cannot you know generate uh, things like that. All of this argument is that you believe that God exists, who's incredibly powerful, incredibly intelligent, and just exists uncaused. No, that's not my argument. My argument is something so different. No, my argument is if you look at this universe designer, designer. You see, designer doesn't need a designer. Okay. Is your question Why mean? Should the universe? Sure. Is your question meaningful? Yes. Okay. So, okay. Let me ask you a similar question. Who is the father of Santa Claus? He the class. This is Santa Claus. Okay. So, if I ask a question like, who is the father of Santa Claus, when Santa Claus doesn't exist, the question is not meaningful. If you don't believe God exists, then ask who who created God. It's not a meaningful question. It's a theological, it's a philosophical question. No, it's not a meaningful this question is, from your side. It's a logical question because no, if, you all want to believe there's a creator who's incredibly powerful, incredibly intelligent, just exists uncaused. At the same time, you claim the universe, which is far simpler, cannot exist uncaused. That's, that's a I was only... Uh, it's not. I'll tell you... It's, in a, in a, in a contradiction. Allow me to explain why. to exist uncaused to God, but not the universe. No, no, allow me to explain. If you are going to ask a question, yeah. the question that you should ask should be meaningful to you. It is. Good. Do you believe in a God? No. Okay. So, 
Asking who created this God that doesn't exist is a meaningful question. The logic of God is flawed. The logical argument see, for God is flawed. Here, That's why I don't believe in God. Please, no, listen. The logic for God is flawed. Excuse me. It's a logical remember, argument remember. for God, but it's flawed. I want to understand whether the question you ask is meaningful to you. Right. So you don't believe in a God that exists, right? Right. So if you then ask, who created this God that doesn't exist? How am I supposed to answer? Tell me. Supposed to give me some way. Wait, wait, wait. So let me answer the question. You asked, who created the God that doesn't exist? You, are, you were talking to her about the universe. So it's basically the universe you see, needs look, to decide. You said the universe allow needs to, me to Allow me to answer your question. Yes, you won't say that God needs to decide. Can I answer your question? So your question is illogical. Your logic is illogical. No, please. Can I answer your question? Okay. Who created the God that doesn't exist? Nobody doesn't exist. I'm, I'm, I'm answering your question. Why are you allow, not allowing me giving me the chance? So your question is this, who created God that doesn't exist? Now to me, a question, a question, if you're going to ask me, has to have some meaning. It must have potential answers. It, it must, allow me to finish, and it must be free from contradictions. Any question, to be a question, must have two essential properties. One of them is, it must be free from contradiction. It, it must have potential answers. If it doesn't have potential answers, it's not a question. It's a rhetorical statement. Okay. So let's see whether your question has those uh, two potential answers or a criteria, whether it's free from any defects. Who created the creator that doesn't exist? Now, this question is defective because it is asking me to answer about something that doesn't exist that was a creator of. So it's a contradiction within itself. How, let me, allow me, allow me to finish. Who created God that doesn't exist? If something doesn't exist, the question is, asking who created it is actually meaningless. Because that thing doesn't exist. You cannot ask who created that doesn't exist. So your question is defective. It's not a question at all. I was saying that the universe needs to sign. No, listen, listen. God needs to sign. If you're going to God ask a question, design, I would expect I would expect you asking me. If the God does not need to be a designer, the universe does not need a designer. That's my question. That's my point. My friend, if, if God, if do you if agree? God can exist do you agree? Your question the is meaningless. Can exist <laughs> do you agree? Your question is meaningless to you. No, it's perfectly meaningful. Okay. okay. So, so imagine now I ask you a question. Who is the father? of something that doesn't exist. No one. Okay, so I answered the same way. God was not created by anyone. Good, so let me continue now. I answer, answer. God was uncre is uncreated. That's what we claim anyway. God is uncreated and has to be uncreated. So let me... The universe has to be created. Excuse me, please. I've answered... Look, I've answered your question. Because you avoid the contradiction. You avoid the point. Okay. If God can May exist, I I'm ask course. everyone else? The universe here. Can exist. I'm did course. I answer his question? Yes, you did. No, no you did you're not. Contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. Okay. No, I not. said, I said, I, I used, <laughs> brother, I God used. God has to exist. Excuse me, allow me to finish. Right. Allow me to finish. I answered, I answered the exact same way that you answered. So I actually borrowed the answer from you. No, you did not. I did. The conversation started because I'm agnostic. He's not trying to convince me. I'm learning. There's no Yes, but I'm pointing out a lot of contradictions here. He's trying to say that the universe needs a designer. And I'm saying if God can exist without a designer, the universe can exist without a designer. The, that's, the, that's the, the reality is, is the reality, the reality is, he's avoiding the question. The reality is, the universe, the universe is not self-conscious. So what? Um, I only opened my mouth and haven't finished my sentence yet. Okay? So what? You see, if you let me finish, then you will understand why. Do you understand? Good. So, the universe is not believed by atheists, scientists, humanists, secularists, or agnostic to be something that possesses consciousness, self awareness, intelligence. <laughs> will yeah, four qualities they don't believe any of that so the universe doesn't have a brain of any kind because we say brain to someone like a biological system which 
thinks and organizes and plans and reflects and so on, right? So when we say about awareness, it's something that is making you aware that you are you're, you're in existence, that you have knowledge of yourself and your surroundings, okay? So the universe doesn't have any of that. It doesn't even know that it exists. It doesn't have this awareness that it exists, neither it has the will to do something because it doesn't know that it exists. It can't do anything. It doesn't have the power to do anything. So this, the, listen, this, this universe doesn't have any of these things for it to do anything because it's simple. This, this universe, this universe doesn't have, this universe doesn't have a will. Because it doesn't have a will, so it cannot do anything by itself. It does. Why do you need a will to do something? Things just happen. When the universe does something, does it know what's it, what it's doing? Does it know? <laughs> so, 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 so it does things not knowing this. I'm going, let's understand, and brother, brother, just understand one thing. Universe does certain things. Does it know it's doing it? No, it's not. So, how do you know the universe is doing it? Because it is doing it, you can see it. No, no. Just is, it's not an explanation. You can see it doing it, it's good. No, no. Just is, it's not an explanation. If I say, like, my proof that God exists is, He exists. It just is. Would you accept that as an explanation, a proof? Would you? Right. So I am not going to accept your, it just is, as a proof or an explanation. So now tell me, please, kindly, why do you say the universe is doing things that you claim it does? Quantum physics. Sorry? You understand quantum physics. Quantum physics explains it all. Quantum physics. So I, so I have to now assume you understand quantum physics, right? Good. Okay. If some things are in, not in existence, very important. I want you to focus on it. If some things like particles, virtual particles, like um, say um, not particles, subatomic particles, or even if you break down, uh, gluons, hadrons, hadrons, leptons. Sorry for the jargons, right? Okay. These are very, very tiny. Okay, we're talking about in terms of quarks and so on. Um, my knowledge of subatomic particles. Excuse me, please. It's not very good because I am not a physicist. Okay, um, but one can read about it if they want to. So, if those things were non-existent in the first place, non-existent means they did not exist at all. Can they pop into existence while they were non-existent? If there's energy available, yes. I think it can. Um, virtual particles can pop into existence temporarily. Sorry? Very quickly. So if they're non-existent, meaning they did not exist. You know what that means? Let me tell you what is a non-existence, an example of a non-existence. Do you know what this rock dream of? What? What does this rock dream of? Nothing. This rock dreams of nothing. That nothing, we know, is a non-existent thing. This rock dreams of something that doesn't exist, because rocks don't dream. So that nothing, imagine it was nothing like that to begin with. Non-existence, nothing. Can this nothing bring itself into existence and become all these quantum particles? I'm saying, can it? According to your physics and quantum physics. Here. Brother, one moment, please, please, please. No. If something... No. It can no. because we're here, which no, 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 means we no. believe in God. No, it's a problem with God. No, you think thinks God exists, because then something does exist. Excuse me. God is a something. I want to so, really... To I want you God to focus exists, focus on this point. I understand the question. I understand it fine. When I think about this one. Because the problem is... Can, can I have your answer again? We don't know how the universe came to be. We don't know. That. That's not my question. This don't is. create a strawman argument. Logical fallacy, know, you see, people's be, comfort zone is creating strawman arguments and saying, no. you know what, and soon what I can do? guarantee he'll move into evolution. Because that's another comfort zone. No, what I asked you, what I asked you with all due respect is something like this. If something is non-existent, it doesn't exist at all. It's absolutely nothing. Absolute nothingness. Can this absolute nothingness then do something or become something? How? Tell me now through the. I don't know how. 
Listen. No, no. Tell me. Listen. Excuse me. Listen. Tell me, brother. Tell me from your knowledge of quantum physics how non-existent can become existence.